Hello, dear friends. I am walking from Canada to Los Angeles, much of the time barefoot. And today I'm going to take you along for a day in my barefoot life on the road. Join me. I'm 800 miles into the journey and about 300 have been barefoot. The other 500 have been with my homemade walking shoes. Forrest Gump's mother said, you can tell a lot about someone by their shoes. Well, you can definitely tell a lot about me by looking at these shoes. These are my magic shoes. I'm only a few minutes into the walk and I've come across this glass. So this is the time for us to talk about glass. What so many people want to know, do my feet get cut? Now, when it comes to glass, of course, I'm gonna keep my eyes open, I'm gonna step around it. But to show you the thickness of my soles and how much glass I can handle, I'm gonna experiment. I'm gonna walk right over this and see what happens right now. So I just stepped on, stepped on dozens or hundreds of shards of glass and nothing, nothing went through. So a little more, all right, I'm gonna take it up one level. I'm gonna actually jump. So, <laughs> I mean, this is my first time ever doing that. And I even myself am slightly surprised but I mean, I'm just in this class. I'm starting off the day on city roads and sidewalks here in Eureka, California. And I've been walking barefoot for over a decade. So this is something I'm very accustomed to. And when I began this long walk, I thought maybe I could do the whole trip barefoot. But within a week, I saw that wasn't happening. of this paved bike trail today to start off and this one's ideal it's pretty smooth and gravel bike trails I'll usually stick to the road over those this one though pretty ideal walking with the cart I'm generally stuck to the pavement but having a backpack means an extra 30 pounds of weight on my feet so the cart is the way to go. Whenever I get opportunities to be off the pavement and on the soil, on the earth, I take that opportunity. But not always because it can often be more challenging to try to manage. So I'll meet you once I get off the road in about three miles. Well, I'm seven miles in. That was a good stretch on the interstate. And I'm feeling sore in the legs and tender in the feet. Let me show you what my feet look like. Oh yeah. You can see where it's worn down right there. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that. So I'm definitely feeling a little tired. Legs are feeling a little sore. I notice when I'm barefoot, my legs get more sore, a little more easily. And my feet are definitely feeling tender. You can see where it's worn down and I can Feel the tenderness there. And it's just a few points where it wears down. And so the interesting thing about walking barefoot is that walking barefoot builds up the soles and thickens the soles. And that's been the case for me for the last decade. And it was only on this trip that walking barefoot actually wore my soles down. 
And this only started back in Oregon. I had done a hundred mile stretch barefoot or almost a hundred miles. And then I started to notice, wow, there's just these spots on the toe, on the ball in a couple spots and then the heel where it must make impact there just more so than others. And it's just wearing it down like sandpaper. So that's become a challenge for me, um, which makes me a little more vulnerable to things that can poke me. That said, uh, this is an example of something that is pretty pokey and that can get into my feet. And actually I did get one thing into my foot just now. It was one of these little pieces and I just felt something that was like, it felt like a little caterpillar with its suction cups just holding on to the side of my foot. And I looked down and it was just one of these things, hadn't poked through far enough to not just like flick right off. So my calluses are pretty thick. I can't tell you how thick they are, but um, what I can tell you is that when I pinch them, you know, there's a good bit there. I have soles and Oh, I'm so glad that I just accidentally misspoke and said calluses because people say all the time, your calluses must be so big, but there's a big difference between a callus and a sole. And, a, and I can only tell you this from experience. I have never looked into the biology of this for sure, but a sole builds up uh, into a sort of a layer that is sort of uniform. Calluses are dead skin from what I can see that are built up in like almost more like chunkiness uh, whereas the soul is t supple and alive and more uniform so I actually I don't have any calluses from what I know calluses come from a continual wearing up against a shoe so that's just an experience that I have and I want people to know that uh, you know I'm not the master of this stuff I'm just a guy who has been walking barefoot for, you know, probably 15 years or so now. I've been experimenting with it. And I'm not gonna dive into all the reasons why I walk barefoot. I cover that in my writing and in another video. Um, but I'll just share the reason I'm walking barefoot now is just to see if I can. It's just an experiment, but at the deepest core, it's just a belief in my own human body and uh, millions of years of evolution. Now. Concrete's a new thing, yes. I'm well aware of that. But I am experimenting with it uh, in 2024 uh, with concrete and with my feet today. Over the last four miles, I looked for things that could potentially cut me and I picked up a bunch of them. They're right here. So I wanted to show you these because this is one of the most common things people are always asking about cutting my feet. So, and I'm gonna go ahead and step on every single one of these items to see what happens. The first thing we're gonna step on is this metal from a tire. Oh, that poked me. It, now it poked me right here. And I got it in that tender spot, but I felt the poke and I let up and that's part of the feet. The key is that our feet have one of the highest concentration of nerve endings of anywhere in the entire body. So, when you're wearing shoes, you lose the connection with that sensitivity. I have it. So I was able to pull up before it would penetrate. And that was even on the more tender spots. All right, let's move on to the screw. This one, yeah. That, so the screw, you know, no worries. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is you'll see most things, they lay flat. Look at this. It's laying flat. It's rare that a screw is ever sitting upright. And it's rare that glass is ever sitting upright. So people are always worried about this stuff, but they don't realize that most of it lies flat. All right, here's a broken glass bottle. All right, get down there and hear the crunch. You know, I'm stepping on that. And that's the way it was laying. And nothing, nothing. All right, now this one I'm a little worried about because it's got some edges here. So I'm gonna go heel directly on this. All right, nothing yet. I'm gonna lift my left foot and put the full weight of my body on my heel. Nothing. 
And then watch, I'm gonna pick this up. Picked it up with my toes. So, I, you know, I haven't done a lot of this. So this is an interesting experiment for myself. Now this is the one I'm the most worried about. This is another broken bottle. That tire, the, that I think that first glass earlier today was from a car window. And I think that's designed to be more rounded. This has got some sharpness. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a full step. And now all the way on it. And let's see, I bet you some of it's stuck to the bottom of my foot. Oh, it didn't even, nothing went through. So another thing to keep in mind, let's take this piece of glass. Another thing to keep in mind is that, oh yeah, let me just, I'm just, I'm poking that hard. The soles do the job. And then the other thing about the soles is that even if the glass does it make, does make it through, slows the movement and then I feel it and I can let up and I can take the glass out before it's gotten very deep into the flesh and it's just sitting there right in the sole. That's why I carry tweezers. Um, but in 300 miles of barefoot, I haven't had to use them once. And then lastly, the spoon. Well, you gotta watch out for the spoon because just like a rake, if you hit this just right, this could flip up and knock you right in the nose. <laughs> now, spoon, spoon injuries are very uncommon, um, but I just, you know, I found the spoon and I had to show it to you. different types of surfaces and you can see a couple of different surfaces right here um, right here you have a pretty gravelly surface with some loose pebbles on top of it here I would actually say is a little bit smoother and then of course you have the white line which you've got paint that actually makes that a lot smoother so there's probably about a dozen or so different surfaces and some of them are smooth for walking and others make walking barefoot at times for me you know excruciating and just not something that I'm interested in doing. We've got blacktop which is the absolute smoothest that I know of. On highway 101 that was fairly smooth I would say at times it was a 6 to 7 out of 10 in smoothness or or at times an 8 to 9 out of 10 then you've got concrete that tends to be pretty smooth and much more easy walking you've got the packed in rock style which can be okay or that can be medium or really challenging um, so that can vary from decent to unwalkable and a lot of the times the older roads are really broken up and that can be challenging. Country roads tend to be more of that packed rock style and broken up. And uh, the consistency of the highway is sometimes easier for a barefoot journey than those country roads. And then of course you have gravel and gravel is one of the most difficult. I've walked many miles on gravel roads and hiking trails, but I generally have to keep my eyes down most of the time and it's not fun. And then lastly, you have that loose gravel on the side of the road. And this is one of the most challenging and can make a smooth road not desirable to be walking barefoot on at all. My feet are feeling kind of tired. I think I'll put on my shoes now. There's only one reason I would really continue barefoot. It's been about eight miles. And that would be for the video, to do a full day in the life barefoot. But 
I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna do what's gonna get me to Los Angeles. And that means wearing my shoes. And these shoes have had about 500 miles. And you might look at them and think those things obviously aren't working because you see these big holes and everything. But they obviously are, because I'm here. And at first, I was looking at the aesthetics and thinking it was a problem. And then I realized all that matters is that the soles are there. And so, so this is working. I just have to, I have to change out the soles here and there. And uh, I'll have to sew on some new ones, but I just slip new leather pieces in there. And I'm hoping to get all the way to Los Angeles on these homemade uh, natural fiber. It's wool, leather, deer sinew. And this is part of the experiment of seeing if I can walk from Canada to Los Angeles, both barefoot and in my homemade natural fiber, naturally dyed shoes, uh, you know, no Nike, no Adidas, no industry. I believe in the human body and I believe in the resources of the earth and nature. And that's what this test is. So, well, I'm not going home. <laughs> I'm just putting on my shoes. What am I supposed to do? Just keep on coming. <laughs> oh, I mean, with the shoes on right now, I don't even have to really think. I'm not saying shoes don't have benefits. I'm not polarized like that. I like to be barefoot. I love to be barefoot. The reason I'm barefoot primarily is because I want to be barefoot. It's as simple as that. But uh, now that I have my own homemade shoes and I'm not buying into some corporate stuff, I'm much more in love with wearing shoes as well. And uh, like I said, these are my magic shoes. I really like wearing them. <laughs> Most people in the society that I live in today have lost a connection not just with their feet, but with everything. For me, being barefoot is a way of reconnecting with myself, reconnecting with the earth on, upon which I stand, and reconnecting with everything, the plants, the animals, the earth as a whole. So for one to understand me, they would have to take off their shoes and to take some steps barefoot, a few at a time, and then a few more at a time, and a few more at a time. So Brooklyn's gonna go home. I'm gonna walk some more miles. And because we're losing light, if you wanna stick around in the morning, I'm gonna share a few more philosophy philosophies that I have on walking barefoot and why I walk barefoot. So good night to Brooklyn, and I'll see you all in the morning for a little bit more barefoot philosophy. I like to remember that feet are a sensory organ. They are designed to bring in information and that's what I'm doing. So, so often people who aren't barefoot, they have their thought pattern based on wearing shoes and then they place that upon me, who's barefoot, who's looking at the world in a different way, who has a sensory organ that is being used, that's receiving information that they're completely unaware of, that they're not connected to. So for example, when I step on sharp rocks or pointy rocks, my feet feel that. And there's a quick reaction that lets up and uh, allows me to not have something that would stab me, that would penetrate because those sensory organs say, lighten up. And some cuts and some scratches are just to be expected for me when it comes to walking barefoot and it's worth it. Uh, just like I get cuts and scratches elsewhere on my body, I expect some to have some on my feet as well. And as far as little bits of glass, I don't mind removing them from my feet. But like I said, I haven't had any in the last 300 miles. And that's just a part of being barefoot for me. I'm, I'm happy to do that in order to get to be barefoot. It's worth it. Now, some people wonder about the toxicity of the road, especially, I think it's called tarmac, the black top. That stuff I think is the most toxic. The rock stuff, and if it's been around for a long time, there's not so much toxicity. As far as from cars, from gas and such, yes, there's some toxicity. And my philosophy is that there's toxicity in the world. 
no matter what I do, I can't avoid all of it while still being a part of society. And it's worth it for me. Everybody has to make their own judgment call. Some people say that our feet actually absorb a lot. I've never researched that and I don't doubt it at all. And so ideally I'm walking in more pure areas, but when I have roads to walk on, that's what I'm doing and for me it's worth it. And then there's the question about hot roads and cold roads, hot feet and cold feet. In the last, uh, well, three months of walking, I haven't had a moment where the road has been too hot. That does happen, but on this trip that hasn't been an issue at all. And I want to say actually that when my soles build up the thickest, it's actually when I'm walking on hot roads. So I think that heat actually helps to build thicker soles. And I actually, for myself, do that on purpose to build up my soles. As far as the cold, when it is cold, my feet are more sensitive and it is more painful. They're less limber and loose. That hasn't been an issue on this trip yet either as well. And last winter in Northern Wisconsin, I found myself able to walk when it was 40 degrees. As long as it was dry, I was able to be out at 40 degrees. So Lieutenant Dan tells Forrest Gump when he's in Vietnam to always keep your feet dry. And that is advice that I very soundly follow. Not, not that they always have to be dry, but you can't leave them wet long term. So a lot of diehard shoe wearers, they think that being barefoot would actually result in poor foot hygiene. But the truth is, is that whether we wear shoes or we're barefoot, hygiene is important and there's issues with wearing shoes and there's issues with being barefoot. And it's important to understand that. As far as the issue with shoes is that when your feet are warm and moist and in a dark place, that's where mold grows. That's where fungus grows. And so having wet feet and socks and shoes is actually generally a bigger problem for hygiene than it is to be barefoot. I don't really have any issues. The sun and the fresh air are the keys to preventing anything like athlete's foot and these different funguses and etc. For my hygiene, I wash my feet in the lakes and the rivers and the oceans. So I get my foot bath in pretty often. And I love to be on the beach. That's my natural exfoliation. I don't need to go to some manicure, pedicure place to get exfoliated. I do that with sand like take a look so got exfoliation right here that's how i keep clean exfoliation on the bottom of the feet i don't have any calluses there's no areas of calluses really maybe a tiny bit so every time that i'm stepping i'm exfoliating and so yeah i mean I feel pretty solid about my hygiene and a lot of people, some people might even think, oh, does he have smelly feet? And I'll tell you, from my experience, smelly feet is only something you get from wearing shoes. Of course, if I was to step in dog poop, then my feet would smell like dog, dog poop, but I'd wash that off. But smelly feet is a non-existent thing for being barefoot. That is from having them be wet and or damp and in shoes and socks. That's where smelly feet come from. My feet have just a earthy, sandy, let's see, more or less like this and a little bit of human to them. Actually haven't smelled my feet very many times before. So that was, that was a new experience. Thanks for being here for it. <laughs> As far as going into stores, I do go into stores barefoot sometimes, and a lot of stores have no issue with it. And what I do, if I do want to be barefoot in the store, is I just carry in my moccasins with me. Or, a lot of the times these days, I just put them on before I go in, if I don't potentially feel like potentially dealing with something. Um, but that said, I am a huge advocate for us being able to be barefoot inside of stores, and that's something you will see me definitely working on in the years and decades ahead. These shoes are handmade along with my friend Emily, and I learned how to make these from an Ojibwe, this is Ojibwe pucker toe style, and I learned this from Sarah Agaton Howes uh, from the book that she created. She lives up in the, uh, on Gitchigumi, Lake Superior. She's in the Duluth area um, near where I grew up. I take care of my feet. These are my walking feet and they're very dear to me. So 
taking care of my feet is, is, is incredibly important to me. I'm grateful for my feet. I love my feet. If you out there think you have ugly feet, you don't. There's no such thing as ugly. There is no concept as ugly being able to fall from a tree into your eye. Ugly is a concept. There is no such thing as an ugly feet, ugly foot or ugly feet. I welcome you to let that go. Embrace your feet however they are. Let your feet out. These feet are the product of millions of years of evolution. They are incredible. They are one of the areas of the body that have the most bones and ligaments and tendons and they are incredible and it means getting to know them. Getting to know my feet is what has allowed me to know what I can't do and I can't do. And that's the other part, testing my limits, knowing my limits. Some people out there are worried about me walking long distances. There's really no need to worry about me because I, yes, I'm testing my limits, but only with in a reasonable realm. So knowing your limits is really important and I, I, I know my limits pretty well and I pull back where needed. I hope that you got a lot out of this day in the life of being barefoot with me. I've shared more than just the day and some of my philosophy. There's a lot more to it. So if you wanna learn more about walking barefoot, you can go to my website, robingreenfield.org slash barefoot. And I have a few more videos that you can watch there as well as a guide with my top tips to help you to start going barefoot if you haven't before or to go barefoot more if you are already barefoot. So I hope to see some of you out there in your bare feet and for us to walk barefoot together. And if you're watching this Rhonda Nelson over in Florida, I love you. I'm so glad to have seen you being barefoot. Uh, Rhonda's a friend of mine who has really started embracing barefoot for my time together and she was at my barefoot school. So I love you all very much and I look forward to walking barefoot with you in the future.